All right, so from last time, we were suspecting some transistors that might be weak and varied over temperature. And I sort of nailed it down to a Q2, which is this transistor here. But you can see there's a whole bunch of identical transistors here. And there's diodes at the bottom. So they're diodes switched in. So these are selectable oscillators. And they are for the different bands. So, um, we take a look at this block diagram here. You can see that there's these individual um, oscillators, and they happen to be Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, Q5, and then their diode switched in. So this is a simplified view of it. So, um, when the radio turns on, no bands work. And then bands come on one by one. The 14 megahertz band comes on first. It depends on whether you're low band, uh, um, uh, low side band, high side band. It it's a funny thing, but they come on in different orders for different reasons. And um, so it was pointed out to me that maybe these. Uh, two SC460 transistors got funny, but there's this other one in there that's a different transistor. Um, it's a 2SC7784, I think that is. Um, so anyway, I previously I, I knew these transistors might be weak. So let's take a look at the data sheet of what those things are, because you can't buy them any longer. That's the problem. They, if you could just buy them, I'd just buy some, but they don't make them anymore. Probably for a good reason. <laughs> um, anyway, it's the uh, 2SC460. It's a funny little square package. It's not this TO92. It's a, it's a square square package, kind of funny. I drew a little diagram down here. It's this funny little square package. And the pinout is funny. It's base collector emitter. And that, I'll get to that a little bit later. But let's take a look at the claims to fame for this uh, transistor. Nothing spectacular. It's a 30 volt transistor, 1.1 volt, uh, saturation voltage. Uh, so, but one of the things we have to be cautious of <clears throat> is the gain bandwidth product. So this is a fast transistor. This is a 230 megahertz transistor. So that's, that's the key in replacing this thing. We need to find a fast transistor, you know, a VHF transistor. And then um, they come in two different varieties, or three, I guess, different uh, different betas, uh, low beta, medium beta, and high beta, all right? And I'm suspecting that the C version was used in um, in the uh, product because it, it, it needs to run fairly high um, for the oscillator to work right. So we're looking at a high high gain, high bandwidth transistor. I think that's all I think that's all that's really necessary, to, yeah, to look at in the data sheet. So I looked for a replacement. Uh, this one was suggested to me, a BF199, and um, it <clears throat> 25 volt transistor. Its gain bandwidth product is 1.1 gigahertz, so it's much much faster, um, and it does have good gain, I believe. Uh, let's see here, where's the gain? HFE. Uh, no, it's low gain. This one's low gain, so anyway, but this one was recommended to be, but guess what? You can't buy these either. <laughs> can't buy those either. Um, uh, here's another one that, that might work. Let's see, what's the claim to fame of this one? Uh, so this one, this one is 650 megahertz. And what kind of HFE can we get with this one? It's kind of low HFE too, so eh. So I searched around and around and around, and uh, I came up with maybe this being the best transistor to replace it with, a BC547. Um, it is a 50 volt part, um, and it has a very high uh, gain, and you can buy it in three different versions, but up to, you know, HFEs of, of, uh, you know, a hundred to 400. So it's, it's a very, um, very good gain. And then it has a, a gain bandwidth product of 300 megahertz. So I think this one 
is going to be a really, really good replacement with one caveat, and that is that, uh, where's the other one here? Uh, this one we needed to have it base collector emitter, and this one is collector base emitter. So I need to, when I put it in the board, I need to cross two, uh, cross two leads. I've done that many times before. It's fine. You just put on a little bit of uh, heat shrink, or, or what I do is I take some. Uh, uh, I'm always stripping, stripping wire, it, and uh, just take a little bit of the insulation that you stripped off and slide it onto a leg and, and use that. So I think what we're going to do today is to um, pull out the transistor of question. Um, we'll do one thing before we do that, but we're, we're going to pull out the transistor of interest and then measure it on a curve tracer and see if we can get it to change with temperature and then uh, put in one of my replacements and give those a try. Now the replacements I got from DigiKey. Um, so these are BC547s and I got two different varieties. And uh, these are the B grade and these are the C grade. So these are the medium, medium beta and these are the high beta. So we can look at that also on the curve tracer. I don't know if the, if the circuit is sensitive to, uh, to the gain or not, but they're so cheap. Um, I just went ahead and bought, bought both kinds. It'd be fun to do a video on that anyway. Um, and then I got some other parts which will be used in a future project. So it's a secret project. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do one thing first though. Let's get rid of these, get rid of that over there. So the uh, phase lock loop has uh, a bunch of oscillators. So one, two, three, four, five. So these are the five uh, oscillators here along this row. And um, they get switched in, diode switching, and then they all have a common output. They're all, they all go out. And then there's a test point here on the board, cleverly enough, there's a test point one. Test point one is the output of the of the oscillator. So I could put my scope on test point one and then I can change the bands on the uh, on the radio and we should be able to see each oscillator and see how healthy it is. All right, let's get a scope probe here and put it ground there and put it on test point one. So now we're gonna be looking at test point one, which is the output of the different the different oscillators. And we'll go over here, see what's going on. Tilt the scope over a little bit. Okay, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna turn the radio on. And I'm changing the bands. And I have um, nothing on the front panel. I have the two dots on the front panel. So we're getting no, no oscillations out of any of the, uh, Sort of saw something there. Let's do an auto scale on him. Okay, so we're getting we're getting kind of this ugly. This one looks somewhat decent. That is the 21 megahertz. I don't know what. Let them look really decent, do they? All right. So let's wait until the uh, display comes on the front. I'll let you know when that happens. Uh, it's going to take some warming up, so I'll come back. All right, we're starting to get some oscillation here at on the uh, 10 meter bands. So they, uh, something seems to be oscillating there. Let's turn the gain up. See, let's go to uh, AC coupling. Hello, AC, isn't this, oh, my, I turned off the touch screen. Touch, touch screen, let's do AC. All right, there we go. Make it a little bit bigger and then make it smaller. All right, so it, the 10 meter band seems to be doing something and the other bands are just kind of dead. So we're just gonna have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, so even though I'm getting some oscillation now on the 10 meters, I'm not getting any uh, display on the front panel. 
All right, I am getting a front panel display on 14 megahertz now. And I get some type of clock. It's not a great clock. And if I turn the IF shift knob, I have an oscillator. If I turn it, the display goes out and our oscillator goes out. But it's a very weak oscillation. But it is oscillating, but it's a very, very weak oscillation. Let's try some other bands now. Maybe they're starting to work. Nope. These are pretty healthy on 10 meters, but I'm still not getting a display. The only display I'm getting is on 14 meters. So that might be, I'm um, 14 megahertz. That, that might be a clue, but only when the IF shift is over to one side. So certainly a clue might be a secondary thing. It only works at lower sideband, not upper sideband. And yeah, it looks really, really weak. We just need to let the, ra oh, there we go. Oh, oh, just started to get 3.5 megahertz to work a little bit. Not very good. I can get a display here. Wow, that's a weird looking. That's a weird looking. And now it's going funny. So yeah, I think there's some funniness going on. All right, well. All right, 29 megahertz is working now. That's the waveform we get on a test point one. And when it doesn't work, it looks like that. When it does work, it looks like that. Weird. Needs that little double bump in there. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's supposed to have double the frequency there. I don't know. Um, interesting. All right. Here's 21 megahertz now working. A really ugly waveform. 14 megahertz working. 7 megahertz working. Look at that ugly waveform. And three and a half. Yikes. So I don't think... I don't think any of these are right. I don't think any of them are right. Let's measure these. Let's see here. Counters. On one. 39 megahertz, 37, 38, 37, 31, 23. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, diagram here, if I can read it right. It's very difficult to read this. All right, I'm going to limit the uh, bandwidth of my scope here to 50 megahertz so we can just see some better waveforms here. There we go. That's better. So these are probably rounded off in the circuit somehow. So anyway, there's our, yeah, these look better, right? All right, so this is our 10 meter stuff here. And then here is uh, 21 megahertz, 14 megahertz, 7 megahertz, that, and 3.5 megahertz, that. So, um, what kind of wave or uh, frequency we get out of this one? 29 megahertz. All right, so let's take a look at. Let's take a look at the functional description here. So we're at 21 megahertz. Our VFO, VCO should be operating between uh, 36 and 37. But that's the output of the VCO. It's not the... It's not those little oscillators. 
Hmm. You can see that the range is pretty small, right? We're always operating between 23 megahertz. Well, here's a lower one. Oh yeah, this is, to, remember, you either mix it with 10 megahertz or mix it with 20 megahertz. It had that doubler circuit. And so these are gonna be used together, 23 and 12, and then 15 and 30 uh, will be a pair. Um, 14 should be around 22 in the mixed input. 24, yeah, I don't know. Let's see here, let's put it on 14 megahertz and we're getting 22.7, 22.7. I don't know if it makes any sense on this thing or not. 22.83, uh, oh, oh, okay. At 22, oh, maybe it is. So let's go, let's go here to 14 exactly. Go to 14 megahertz. Okay, it's for 14. At 14, we should be 22.8. And uh, we're at 22.73. Okay, well, that sounds reasonable then. Okay. So, uh, I think you can see though that uh, that looks fairly healthy. That looks pretty healthy. Healthy, healthy, healthy. And then if I go to seven megahertz, not so much, and 3.5 megahertz, not so much, even though it works. Even though the radio is working, it's filtering that somehow and making it look pretty. Let's uh, change the bandwidth way down to um, 20 megahertz, 10 megahertz. Yeah, yeah, no, that's not right. 50 megahertz. 14 megahertz. Okay, we're on seven. Seven's supposed to be between 15.8. Now nah, it's too low. I don't know. There's something funny going on. Anyway, I still suspect some boards. Other people have suggested solder joints. Other people have suggested vias. There's no vias on this board. It's single-sided board. Um, other people have suggested glue. I, I don't see any glue anywhere, so I don't know. Um, so what we'll do is, uh, other people suggested voltages. So I'm going to do that also. Let's measure some voltages onto this board, make sure the voltages are stable, and then we'll start playing with some transistors.